Uh, thanks all for honoring our invitation to attend to this webinar today. And welcome all to this webinar on GBV CP coordination for inclusion of child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence and adapted response to COVID-19. My name is Vivian Koech. I'm the Child and Adolescent Survivor Initiative Coordinator working for gender-based violence area of responsibility. Uh, in this meeting today, I have my fellow lead organizer, who is Karina Hickley. Karina, can you say hi or wave? Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, Karina Hickling is CP um, AOR uh, CASI coordinator. She's actually my counterpart. Um, under CASI as well, we have um, colleagues who are also part of CASI operational team members. We have Jennifer Lee. Uh, Jennifer Lee, say hi. Hi, everyone. Nice to see everyone. And we have Tizita, who is also CPGBV uh, uh, specialist. Uh, welcome, Tizita. Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay, so Tizita, um, I'll tell you when to share the presentation. It's no time yet. Um, so before I continue, I'd like to welcome Sophia Ketiba to open for us. Thanks a lot, uh, Viviane, uh, and uh, welcome everyone. I'm Sophia Kati Brandy. I'm the Deputy Global Protection Cluster Coordinator, and it's a great pleasure to be with you this afternoon to actually launch uh, the first thematic event of the, the forum, the Protection Forum this year. Uh, so we're very excited uh, to have you on board, and thanks for joining. Um, as you know, we convene this uh, forum every year to bring all our partners together to discuss current issues and, and uh, the strategic direction of the, of the Global Protection Cluster, but also to engage on, on more specific technical details um, and, and link regional, local and, and global level. Um, this year, because of COVID-19, of course, for the first time, we don't do it in person, but uh, virtually. So a first disclaimer, be, uh, be uh, patient with us uh, in case there's any technical hiccups. Uh, we are trying our best, uh, but it's the first time that we are doing this uh, completely virtually for the whole month of uh, September. Um, as you know, the forum is uh, organized in three segments, uh, in three different uh, segments. We have um, the thematic seminars or webinars, which are convened and open to all the memberships of the cluster um, from, from local level or local members of the cluster to the global level. Um, and these are again to discuss the various uh, thematics uh, that, uh, you, that our colleagues from the field brought to our attention. Then we have a second type of events, which are technical events, which are working sessions dedicated to our coordinators. And then finally, we will have at the end of the year, um, a high level segment um, during which we hope to have uh, several of our of senior managers uh, to engage with donors and particularly raise uh, uh, the, the attention on, on key protection issues and particularly uh, uh, financing and funding gaps for the protection sector. So that will take place on the 30th of, of November and, and we'll send you further information uh, once uh, we have finalized that, uh, that issues. Um, I think that's all what I wanted to say today. I uh, just wanted to stress again the fact that, of course, uh, uh, sexual violence is a key protection issue in our operation, and we've seen an increase in uh, sexual violence during the COVID-19. Uh, I'm sure you're all uh, reading regularly or receiving some of our information. Our CTREPS stresses that. Uh, so if you don't have it, you can find it online. But uh, it's definitely a, a very, very uh, important issues for us. And we're very happy to actually start the forum with uh, the gender-based violence and the child protection and AWAR to, to discuss how we can better to collectively address these issues. So with that, uh, a big thanks. Uh, welcome, Michael, and uh, have a very good uh, discussion. Bye. Thank you. And just checking, you can hear me OK. Yes, my colleague, I can hear Perfect. you. Okay, Vivian, you're fine for me to go ahead? Yes, Michael, welcome. Okay, thank you. And yeah, thanks for the introduction as well. Uh, and thanks everyone for joining the first session, as, as Sophia is saying, really, really excited. And in a way, despite not being able to all be together, um, 
one of the things we think is possible is that more people are able to join um, from many, many different different backgrounds, different parts of the protection cluster members from from all over the world. So a big a big welcome. I've got two and a half minutes. I've been told, so I'm going to be very quick. Um, so this uh, this session today is really part of an ongoing cooperation between the Child Protection AOR and the GBV AOR. We're part of the protection cluster and as part of getting better coherence and cooperation, um, the Child and Adolescent Survivor Initiative was started some years ago. And that's in recognition that we've got from the child protection perspective, many, many children, particularly teenagers, um, who are survivors of sexual violence and without clear cooperation between the child protection coordination groups and GBV coordination groups, um, those children can fall through the cracks. Um, so there's a number of different dimensions to Kazi. Um, Jennifer Lee just introduced herself. We've got a community of practice to learn from you about your understandings um, and experiences of working with child and adolescent survivors. We've also got work on getting more predictable cooperation between the AORs, so coming up with a framework and some tips about how we work together. We're also looking at what are the barriers to services, because whilst it's great that we may have um, cooperative service mapping, referral pathways, of course, if children and adolescents are not able um, to access services, or if we don't even know whether they are or if they're not, why they're not, we're not able to get the right services in place. So listening to them. So we've got some specific initiatives on barrier analysis that Vivian and Karina are, are leading as well. The work across the AORs is, is super important. I mentioned coherence, but also efficiency. Looking at how we can come up with the best cooperative framework, depending on the location, so we get the best efficiency and also the best quality of services. So the overall objective under CASI is to improve the quality and access of services. So I am going to stop there. I think I did it in under two and a half minutes. We've got some great presentations today. Do use the chat box. Um, do raise your hand. I know that the presenters and everyone wants to hear from you. It's a chance to also exchange. One of the things we always knew, but we've notice more now than ever is that people love hearing from each other and their experiences so do jump in and get involved and with that i think i'm turning to stephanie over to you thank you michael and thank you very much for giving us a short and brief introduction to um sort of more broadly what the child and adolescent survivors initiative is doing um i'm stephanie rühl and i would like to welcome you on behalf of the gbv aor we're really pleased that there's been such huge interest and um, participation in this webinar already from the start. It's, a, it's really quite encouraging. And I think it shows that there's a growing recognition of what Michael was describing, that really we need to be working together really closely. And we need to be thinking how, not only across the GDV and CPA or but even going broader um, across protection and beyond, um, we can work together to address um, the particular vulnerabilities, especially right now in the times of COVID. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to the discussion today to see what we can up and come up with together, what good practices we've already seen over the past months. And with that, without further ado, I'm going to hand back over to Vivian. And yeah, I thank you all for joining. Over to you. Thanks. Thanks, Stephanie and Michael, for the opening remarks, and uh, Sophia as well. Um, so we are going to start the webinar with a presentation of the agenda. Uh, Tizita, can you share the screen? So uh, this is the agenda of the presentation. Second slide, please. Tizita. So um, I'm actually going to present the agenda for today's meeting. I think Tizita is uh, probably she can't hear me. Um, so um, in today's webinar, we have quite a number of presenters and I'm going to introduce them 
Uh, when you hear your name, please present us, say hi. Uh, we are going to have Bashir Murad, who is the interagency case management advisor uh, deployed by IRC in Iraq and Hamsa Abdul Nabe, field coordinator, who will be supporting us to share experiences of Iraq. Bashir and Hamsa. Hi Vivian, hi everyone. Happy to be with hi. you today. Hi Bashir, welcome. Hamsa. Okay, um, we also have Emmanuel Haung, who is the Child Protection Subcluster Coordinator for Niger. Um, Emmanuel, say hi. Yes, hi, Vivian. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Uh, we have Anifa Soumania, who is the GBV Subcluster Coordinator for Niger. Hi, Anifa. I'm not sure he was able to join. Uh, let me recontact him. Okay. Hi, Amsa. I can see you. Hi Vivian, hi everyone. I'm very glad to, to see you all. Um, this is Hamza from UNFPA, uh, working as a field coordinator for Nainoa and also chairing the GBV working group in Nainoa. Over to you, thank you. Thank you Hamza. We have Jennifer Lee, who is the CPGBV CASI advisor working with IRC. Jennifer Lee. Hi again everyone and Anifa, I saw your message and I unmuted you, so hopefully you can speak now. Okay, thanks Jennifer. We have Tizita Tekle Sadiq, who is the CPGBV CASI specialist with IRC. Hi Tizita. Hi everyone. <laughs> and then we have Karina Hickling, who is the CASI coordinator, who will also be presenting. Um, and then we also have uh, Stella Mila from Active Youth Agency in South Sudan, who will also be presenting something on CASI Learning Program. Hi, Stella. Hi, Stella. Uh, I'm most really glad to, to be part of this meeting. Uh, thank you very much to meet the colleagues from other parts of the world. Thank you. Thanks, Stella. And then we have, um, we will also have Kudsanai Mativirira, who works with UNIDOR in South Sudan as well, sharing something on CASI learning program. In South Sudan. Thank you. In South Sudan. Hi, Kudsi. Hi, everyone. This is Kudzi. Uh, I work in South Sudan with UNIDO. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, Tizita, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, the flow of the <laughs> webinar will be as follows. We will have an introduction uh, of CASI Phase 2 uh, activities. This will be shared by Karina Hickling. And then after that, we will have Iraq and Niger coordination teams uh, sharing their experiences and case studies and also sharing their best practices and how CP and GBV are coordinating uh, support right now during the COVID-19 response. And also we will have, I will also be presenting myself on CASI um, practical examples and uh, CASI tools that we've supported the different countries in developing them as well as the support that we've provided. Uh, we will also have our IRC colleagues also presenting on CASI learning program um, and technical capacity development and we will have two uh, organizations also sharing about CASI learning program and that is the UNIDO and um, and uh, active youth agency. And then after that, we'll have question answer session and closing remarks uh, by uh, Jennifer Lee and Karina Hickling respectively. Next slide, please. Uh, 
um, general information for this webinar are that uh, please write your name, your organization, and your role in the chat box. Also write any question or comment or any request in the chat box. And we will have somebody within our team who is managing, uh, who will be also managing the chat box for us, as well as also facilitating the question answer session when that time comes. Also, please take three minutes of your, eval of your time to do an evaluation. And a link will also be shared with us uh, on the chat box. Um, this webinar will be recorded and it will be made anonymous. It will later be posted for people who do not have the opportunity to attend this meeting to access it later. Um, also, as Sophia said, this is the first webinar on the thematic areas and we are all learning by doing. So let, it also gives us an opportunity to discuss and strengthen linkages between AOR and other sectors. And I think this is a good platform where I know we are a mix of people with different backgrounds in terms of protection. And uh, it's a high opportunity for us to share our experiences through the chat box and asking questions. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand over to the next session to Karina Hickling to take us through the first session of this uh, webinar. Welcome, Karina. Thank you so much, Vivian, and thank you for a great introduction. I feel like we are uh, getting a bit warm now in, in this and um, starting to uh, get down to business. So, uh, Tutsita, would you mind switching on the slides again, please? Fantastic. So, uh, the Child and Adolescent Survivor Initiative, just a little bit of a background. Maybe this is something new for people. We have been around for a bit of time, but um, the overall objective for us is for child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence in humanitarian settings to have access to quality services that meet their diverse and specific needs. And we are a initiative that is supported through the Child Protection AOR, the GBV AOR, uh, IRC and NORCAP. So together we are uh, sitting, uh, working with the uh, coordination groups and mechanisms in humanitarian settings. Next slide, please. So Kasi, uh, as Michael and Vivian have said, uh, and Stephanie, that we are working to improve the quality and access to services for child and adolescent survivors. And uh, access is actually something that is one of the major issues. We don't really, uh, as responders, have uh, adolescents, child and adolescent survivors accessing services. This, that's something that we know. We don't know exactly what it is that we need to change. So we are working on trying to be better at understanding the needs. We know that there are needs and we know that services need to be provided. But since this is contextualized, access is something that needs to be worked out in each of the settings. And of course, strengthening coordination and collaboration between CP and GBV actors. So having this solid base, uh, a cooperative, collaborative uh, base uh, will be a better starting point for improving the access and quality for the services. And of course, interagency support for country level CP and GBV coordination groups. That is how we are operationalizing CASI through providing support to actors on the ground, coming together, developing referral mechanisms, gaps, un understanding and uh, addressing gaps um, in capacity, service outreach, etc. 
and te technical capacity development, which will be uh, talked uh, about by the CASI Learning Initiative uh, colleagues, uh, Titsita and Jennifer, uh, so that the appropriate care can, uh, we know how to appropriately respond to and care for to uh, survivors. I just want to say something on the terminology. We use child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence and I just would like to underline that this is here. We are really trying to embody a wide and overlapping types of sexual violence including GBV that affect children and adolescents and I just would like to reiterate that this includes rape, sexual slavery, indecent assault, sexual exploitation and or abuse, forced pregnancy, abortion, sterilization, strip searches, female genital mutilation, child early and forced marriage, levirate marriage, incest, sexual harassment, defilement, commercial sexual exploitation, online sexual abuse and cyberbullying and trafficking for sexual purposes. It can also include witnessing GBV and sexual violence between adults, for example, in the home. Uh, we know and you know that the effects of GBV and sexual violence are multifaceted and intergenerational and the responses must be tuned to the needs of the survivor in context where it is perpetrated. And also we underline that both girls and boys are affected by GBV and sexual violence. So this slide shows you uh, the technical guidance that we're doing uh, through the CASI learning uh, program and in-country and remote support to CP and GBV coordination. So we are available to support coordination groups in at national and subnational levels, at regional levels. Uh, and of course, in the COVID situation, this is taking place remotely. Uh, CASI, of course, was set up as uh, with an ability to provide missions, but at the moment we do those missions remotely. Next slide, please. So how to request support from CASI? An email, preferably a joint email by CP and DBV coordinators or other relevant uh, focal points to the AOR, CP AOR help desk and DBV AOR uh, focal point. And you see the two email addresses on the screen now and we will make sure that those are shared. Uh, reach out ask for support and we work out how to best uh, support you with anything, everything that has to do with responding and being better at providing access to child and adolescent survivors. Uh, yes, and uh, just one last thing, we do need to uh, also acknowledge the fact that our donors uh, Swiss Development Corporation, Norwegian uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and USAID has provided generously support for the CASI initiative. So um, thank you for allowing us to do this very important work. So that was uh, a little introduction to CASI and how to get in contact with us. Uh, I would like to give the word back to Vivian for the next agenda item. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Karina, for the great presentation on how coordination groups can get engaged. Uh, I do not want us to take more time. Uh, I would like to invite um, our Iraq coordination team, Bashir Murad, uh, Interagency Case Management Advisor and Hamsa Abdul Nabe for them to take us through the next session on sharing Iraq experience on CASI. Welcome, Bashir. 
Yes, and Vivian. Answer. Thank you so much. Um, so, as Vivian mentioned, uh, I'm from the Child Protection Subcluster in Bashir. Me and Hamza will be going through CASI initiative in Iraq, uh, how it has been implemented and what's the achievement. So we will go through the background in Iraq, the gaps, and then Hamza will be following by the achievement in Iraq. And then we will end up by the challenge that we have. I mean, the, and then we will be finishing the Iraq uh, session. So uh, CASI, uh, I mean, the, the specific objective uh, CASI, it's in line with, with the global uh, objectives. So it was to improve and enhance the quality of access uh, to services for children and adolescent survivors from sexual abuse in emergency. And the second objective was to provide interagency support to country level uh, CP and GBV uh, coordination groups. Uh, I would like to, to say that in this presentation, we will capture some of the, the highlighted uh, points from phase one as it was continuous, I mean, continuing from Janu uh, January 2018 as the first phase. Then it, it, it followed by the second phase, in, especially in Ninawa. So this initiative have been implemented in Anbar, Salah ad -Din in 2018-2019, and then it followed uh, and we rule out in, in Ninawa. Uh, in 2019 and 2020. Second, uh, yes. So the situation before CASI in Iraq, I, I would like to mention a few points that um, describe the situation uh, in Iraq before before CASI. Uh, so the first one was, I mean, related to the coordination. Uh, the coordination between the GBV and CP, I mean, was in place, but was not so efficient. So, I mean, like the, there was a lack of partnership and collaboration. Uh, this was due to, I mean, the, the uh, lack of, of experience by the staff in the field. So all the coordination was uh, happened between the coordinator, I mean, the working group coordinators. Uh, the referral pathway uh, in terms of GBV and CP it was unclear. Uh, when it comes to the referring the cases to each other, especially when the children was uh, under 12. So sometimes the CP staff was, was uh, describing that this is responsibility of GBV staff and then GBV staff, they said, I mean, in, in many occasions that uh, we need to, to Hi, Bashir. Can everyone else hear Bashir? No, but we can hear you, Vivian. Hi, Bashir. Okay, I think he lost his connection. Shall I proceed? Yes, Hamza, please. Thanks. Okay. So uh, I, will, I will proceed with uh, what Bashir mentioned, is that uh, the, the situation before uh, the initiative was actually uh, like a ping pong between the CP and the GBB working group, especially in Nainawa. So we used to refer uh, the uh, the case, this uh, GBV case uh, uh, under age. We would we would refer it back to the CP, and the CP would refer it back to the to the GBV actor. So this was the, the situation actually. After that, uh, with the with the next slide, um, uh, what we did is that we basically um, I'm not sure if the if the slide is is showing now. Or it's uh, it's uh, Bashir is, is working on that. I'm sorry, uh, the the electricity cut. It's Iraq, and then uh, it's normal. Okay. Bashir, I was prepared. Just... Yes, I'm Bashir. Yeah, if you can just Bashir um, show the, the third slide, please. Yeah, if you go, if you go back to. Yes, again. Yes. So I was in, in the CP and GBV referral, uh, we're limited to the CP and GBV working groups. So it means that, uh, I mean, as a GBV, I, I mean, GBV and CP working group coordinators, we receive a lot of cases. Then the, the, this kind of, of referral, referring the cases and the knowledge was uh, really on, on this coordination mechanism, then it was going down. So it was from field to the coordinator of the working group, then from the working group to the field again. And 
this we wanted to, to see how Cassie addressed that in the following uh, I mean, uh, slides. Uh, and the, I mean, GBV and CP staff were in need of capacity development. So it was clear that they have uh, a knowledge on case management in general, GBV case management and CP uh, case management. But when it comes to child and adolescent survivor, there was a, a need to, to more their capacity to improve addressing and uh, responding to this kind of cases in different location and Bar Salah Hadin, even in Nineveh. Uh, and this, I think, like, Cassie have, have achieved something and still we are in need of, of more capacity to address all the, uh, the issues. Um, the last point, um, I mean, before we, we, we do have the SOPs for, for case management, child protection case management and GBV uh, case management, there was a small I mean, coordination between GBV and CP. So we, we do have some kind of section integrated in both SOPs. But when it comes to the, the, the like, uh, a guidance document to clarify the rule and responsibilities, uh, there was nothing existing in Iraq. Um, so, I mean, now in the achievement, you will see as well that this document have a great role and exchange the experience among the CP and GBV. Uh, so we were in need of this kind of document in Iraq. Uh, here I'm, I'm at the end of, of these two things. I will hand over to Hamza to continue on the achievement and challenge. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for sharing. So uh, what we did is that uh, with the support of the CACI coordinator uh, during her mission to Iraq, to Nainawa especially, we brought together the CP and GBV actors uh, in one meeting and we discussed that we, we do have gaps, we do have referral gaps, uh, we, we do need to, um, uh, to, uh, to update service mapping and agree on a coordination mechanism. So uh, we have reviewed the existing CP and GBV coordination tools that we have uh, and we agreed that we need to work on something. So uh, we have developed the CP GBV guidance notes uh, on case management. Uh, which has basically uh, a leading agency and a uh, supporting agency and the selection of the leading and supporting agency that would deal with, with the case. Um, uh, the leading agency can be CP or GVD and vice versa uh, uh, based on the need of the case. So uh, it, it's actually uh, um, a case by case assessment and, uh, and allocation for both agencies. Uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the the concept notes uh, or the initiative uh, also facilitates the, the drafting of, uh, of another, uh, let's say, uh, training material or orientation material uh, along with the CP and GBV actors uh, and that was also uh, copied in Ambar, Salah Haddin and Nainawa. And the, uh, the concept note also can be shared with you guys um, in Arabic and English as well. Uh, for the next slide, uh, what, what was the impact of CAPI? Actually, uh, we could, uh, through, through CAFI, through this initiative, uh, we could, um, we, we could uh, guarantee uh, a knowledge transfer between the staff. Uh, so the CP, uh, the CP staff was also introduced to, to, uh, to GDP coordination and referral. And also, um, this was also uh, a kind of um, managing or like enhancing uh, the uh, accessibility or enhancing the, the, the way of handling uh, complex cases. Uh, also, uh, speaking of coordination, all the uh, NGOs uh, also uh, assign focal points uh, to their, 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 let's say, uh, the GBV working group assigned focal points for, the, for their respective uh, GBV actors, and the same thing happens to GBV as to CP actors as well. So this will also work and enhance the coordination level between the CP and GBV actors in Manoa. Um, around the 20 CP and GBV management actors from local and international uh, NGOs uh, operating in Salah Haddin, Ambar, and Manoa completed the contextualized uh, caring for child survivor training in August uh, 2018. Uh, also, 89% of those uh, actors um, also uh, came, came along with, with uh, or conducted three to two hours follow-up and peer-to-peer -peer, uh, assessment. 
uh, and uh, also uh, this was happened in uh, November and October uh, and also December 2018. Uh, finally, CASI was able also to, to provide technical input and feedback to the interagency uh, CP case management through those SOPs. Uh, finally, regarding the challenges that we face in Iraq, so uh, we had uh, we had a uh, few challenges. Uh, the major challenges uh, there was the limited CP and GBB service providers working in the same location. So when we started uh, uh, piloting this test initially, we started in, in, in one of the camps in Manawa. Uh, because we selected this camp because there was CP and GBB access. And then after uh, after the COVID crisis, uh, there was also limited access. Uh, to those actors, limited access to the camp as well uh, from the staff side. So uh, we, we also chose to move this uh, initiative to inside Mosul. And, and here we take this gap or this challenge um, with the limited access of uh, CP and GV actors within one neighborhood. Uh, because this will bring us to another uh, challenge, which is the, uh, uh, the uh, let's say, some beneficiaries don't have. The, uh, the capacity or the financial aid to, to support them to move from this uh, G, from this uh, center of GDB to the another center uh, of CP. Uh, finally, uh, also survival can, can uh, couldn't access uh, services due to lack of official doc documents and also risk of being detained. This was also especially uh, in camp. Um, this is basically uh, or mainly the challenges that we have we have faced uh, in our uh, experience in Iraq and Nainawa. And uh, over to you, I will uh, uh, I will uh, uh, give it to a little thought to Vivian for any comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Hamza and uh, Bashir extremely important uh, lessons that you've learned and that you were able to share with us. Now I would just like to hand over the uh, floor to Niger and uh, Emmanuel Hart from the Child Protection uh, Coordination Mechanism and Anifa Zumana who's from the GBB subcluster. Please uh, go ahead. Are you both on? I've, have you been unmuted? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. And, and Anifa will present tomorrow. The French version, oh. but he is online. You can see him. Fantastic, thank you. It's all uh, your <laughs> Are the participants seeing my uh, screen? Great. Yes, I can see you, Emmanuel. Okay, thank you. So, thank you for um, listening to our CASI uh, experience in Niger. I'm the child protection. Um, subcluster coordinator while while Anifa is um, the VBG, uh, VBG uh, subcluster coordinator. So we definitely work together on CASI. <coughs> so let me just, uh, voila. So CASI started uh, in Niger in uh, DIFA, so uh, East, Eastern Niger. Um, DIFA was chosen because it's a crisis region with high uh, VBG uh, rate and um, the work started there in 2018. So as you can see on this map, uh, the crisis region are now up to three. Uh, so the Lake Chad Basin crisis is DIFA in orange and then in red Tawa Tilaberi the Mali border crisis, and uh, recently Maradi uh, was had added with uh, also high uh, sexual violence um, uh, due uh, mainly to the non-state armed group attacks uh, from um, Nigeria. Also, um, 
just uh, to come back on Niger context, the population is increasingly strongly to reach 23 million of people with a fertility rate of seven children per woman. So the context, uh, so CASI is a very welcome uh, in, uh, in Niger. Uh, the context, the humanitarian context is, uh, is tough with a few actors and also uh, a very difficult access to some remote areas. Um, CASI is bringing a high value added um, uh, wave motivation uh, because he, of course um, the efforts from uh, the child protection and the PPG sector are joint and um, he brings some um, uh, new energy in the country to work uh, in, uh, in one direction. So I won't spend too much time on uh, CASI at a glance because uh, this is a model which is uh, replicated in, par in uh, all countries. Uh, so yes, uh, the members of the Child Protection and the VBG subcluster work together to strengthen the case management skills of social workers of course the coordination and also the sensitization and advocacy on the issue of sexual violence against children and adolescents. Um, I would like to show some of the pictures of the champions and also super champions because they are the ones uh, working uh, in the field in very difficult uh, areas and um, bringing their skills uh, to bring the right response to the um, uh, VBG uh, survivors. You can read uh, some of them, their uh, comments. Um, they are very enthusiastic uh, staff who were really proud to work on CASI in 2019 and uh, to gain more uh, skills. So uh, two thousand, CASI 2019 results, um, the police, justice and NGOs offering mental health services were also trained because they, of course, they are the one um, in contact with the survivors. At the national level, the coordination between uh, the two sectors was increased uh, by, via various uh, meetings, also uh, tools which were developed. So uh, SOP for child and adolescent survivor of sexual violence and a, jo a joint uh, work plan. At the global level, uh, I think that uh, CASI uh, is now far more uh, known and also the needs are uh, included in the HNO HRP 2009, tw uh, 2020. So I would like to uh, emphasize the fact that um, CASI um, brought a high motivation between, uh, for the staff. So you can see, for instance, that some uh, WhatsApp uh, group were uh, formed and um, this was actually one of the um, value of CASI uh, because they were able, uh, able to share experiences, good practices and also uh, I think to share motivation and courage uh, between uh, all the staff spread in um, the emergency uh, regions. So challenges in 2020, um, so both sectors decided to uh, focus on uh, basic tools we needed to really make uh, CASI move forward. So for instance, uh, we worked on the national mapping of uh, services and uh, the referral um, pathways. Uh, also the implementation of CPIMS plus and GBVIMS on um, on uh, UNFPS side. Um, one of the other challenge, challenges was that um, ANIFA is double hatting. 
so the workload is high to uh, make uh, GASI work and uh, of course we need uh, time and uh, resources. And uh, last but not least, uh, the Ministry knows about uh, the initiative but the, there, is not, there is no real ownership to make it, um, to make GASI uh, move forward. There is a high participation but uh, we lack a bit of uh, leadership on their side. Then uh, COVID hit us, hit us, uh, all of us. So the coordination between the two sectors uh, was still uh, working, but was slowed down due to health restriction and the breakdown of regular programs. However, it showed that uh, the child protection and VBG skills of social workers were really needed, especially in uh, this new context. Um, you can see on the graph that uh, the evolution, evolution of the number of children uh, also increased, um, per, may, uh, perhaps uh, because of uh, COVID. We don't have the right study today to show the impact of COVID on uh, the number of uh, VBG cases, but definitely we can see that uh, more children are uh, receiving um, the CASI services uh, in 2020. Now uh, I would like it to express CASI need to move forward because this is the main um, message uh, today. Uh, so first uh, in Niger we need to assess the need of a child survivor of sexual violence in all regions. We need figures to be able to raise uh, more funds. The second uh, point is that we need to mobilize resources uh, to roll out the initiative not only in DIFA, but also in uh, Tilaberi, Tawa, Maradi, Zander and Agadez, all these border regions which are really um, under pressure due to the non-state armed group attacks. Um, then the third point is, uh, of course, uh, HR uh, is needed to make it um, to make us move forward uh, at the field level to uh, really get uh, result-oriented um, uh, impact uh, for the children. And last but not least, uh, we will need to encourage national ownership of the initiative in order to. Um, to make uh, CASI uh, sustainable uh, in, the, in the years, uh, in the coming years. Voilà. Sorry for my French accent. I hope uh, you did, uh, you understood me. If not, uh, I can also speak in French. And um, and Anifa is also here to uh, respond to um, to your question. Thank you. Over. Thank you so much, uh, Emmanuel. I uh, I just cannot believe how much how different the two uh, initiatives are in uh, Iraq and in Niger, and how well it is responding to your specific context. Um, the challenges, of course, of COVID nineteen is also highlighting perhaps the need as never before and uh, you're rightly pointing out that this is uh, something that is additional and that we need to uh, use this as to continue the work of, of CASI uh, as, as it really is uh, putting pinpointing the issues around sexual violence against a child and adolescents. Thank you so much. I would like to hand over the word to Vivian to take you to the next agenda item. Thank you again for uh, the presentations. Um, thank you, Karina, for this opportunity. I'm going to present on uh, CASI coordination tools um, and the examples of tools that uh, we've uh, supported on phase two. So uh, next slide, Zita. Yes, um, 
I would like to make a few comments here first before I start off by saying that um, for CASI, uh, we would like to promote actually dialogue between CP and GBV coordination group uh, to ensure that they work closely and uh, collaborate in providing support to child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence. This is a vulnerable group that falls through the cracks on most occasions because as Bashir said earlier, that um, because they are children, then it means it falls within the mandate of child protection. But because they've experienced sexual violence, then it means again, it falls within the mandate of uh, GBV. So in this case, for these children to still get the support that they need as any other target group or the vulnerable group, then it means there is need for dialogue or working closely between the two coordination groups to ensure that the support to these um, child and adolescent survivors is ensured. Uh, for CASI also, we would like to see that uh, CP and GBV uh, coordination group, as well as actors in the field locations, complement each other in providing support to child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence. And uh, for CASI as well, uh, in as much as we are supporting in developing these tools or uh, supporting in developing of these coordination tools, uh, we do also not want to duplicate or to develop new tools. But in this uh, case, we would like to ensure that the existing tools, be it service mapping tools, referral pathways, standard operating procedures and all that, we ensure that these tools have or include child and adolescent issues in them. So in this regard, uh, I would like to, us to go through uh, some of the coordination tools that we've actually supported on and uh, for strengthening coordination, as Karina said in the earlier presentation. Uh, we've actually tried to support or uh, we've supported on service mapping and referral pathways. And how do we approach this? We identify the service gaps in these two tools. The service mapping tools, does it include issues or needs of child and adolescent survivor? Does it have um, ensure access to services for the traditional services, for example, uh, medical, PSS, legal, uh, safety and security, and many other support or um, services that child and adolescent survivor may require. If that is not included in the service mapping uh, for those specific countries where we are supporting on, then we ensure that um, we update their existing referral pathway from the CP side or GBV side. And as I said, we do not want to do a replication. What we do is ensure that it includes. So for GBV, we see whether it does include services for child and adolescent survivors. And for CP, we also uh, look at the same. And in this situation, we uh, encourage uh, focal contact persons specifically to support the referral and the receiving of cases for child and adolescent survivors between the different agencies that is provide support to the end, like uh, through the case management process. So um, at the moment, um, what we've supported in different countries may not actually be the service and referral pathway, but this is the kind of support that we can provide if, country, if a country uh, mission comes to CASI and say, this is the support that we would, want, we would like CASI to support us on. We also have the standard operating procedures. The same process is uh, as it is for service mapping and referral pathway. We do it again for standard operating procedures. We identify whether uh, the GBV and CP standard operating procedures in the country have child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence issues included. Does it have specific um, sections on child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence? Does it include considerations for child and adolescent survivors? For example, the mandatory reporting, 
best interest of the child, informed accent, consent, confidentiality protocol, among other things. And if it doesn't, then uh, we can see how to uh, integrate this in the existing standard operating procedures for TBV and CP. In this regard as well, uh, we, 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 we also uh, go with the decisions from the coordination group, what works better for them. For example, some country missions uh, think that we could do an SOP and have it as an, an addendum in the existing standard operating procedures, or we can just have it as an annex in the already existing standard operating procedures. So, so that comes in uh, once we are done with uh, developing um, the specific things in regards to child and adolescent survivors. Here we have a link that um, to guidance documents on creating referral pathway for child survivors. We also have here a, a document, um, a GBV referral pathway that was developed uh, for West Cameroon. It is a directory of service providers, but it does include the specific uh, services for child and adolescent survivors in it. So it's a good example of what I'm talking about. The next slide is Zita. Uh, we also have supported on local service agreements and guidance not for case coordination. Um, sorry, first, uh, on the standard operating procedures, we are currently supporting South Sudan on that. And uh, we are in the process of having discussions of how best we can um, include child and adolescent survivor issues in their SOP. So on this slide, uh, we are also supporting on developing local service agreements or guidance not for case coordination. Um, if you look at, um, I think this was presented by Bashir um, uh, under Iraq, that um, this is a tool that uh, was developed to support uh, effective coordination of uh, support to child and adolescent survivor in locations where both CP and GBV actors exist. In this guide that not, um, actually it was noted between CP and GBV actors in Iraq that sometimes when a case of child and adolescent survivor is identified, um, it is not clear of who will be the lead agency to support this child. The lead agency I mean uh, the agency that will take through the child, the case management process, right from the identification intake to closing of the case. Um, so in this regard, this uh, guidance note was developed to give a direction of what is going to happen uh, when a case of child survivor is identified in that location and who should be referred to in that lead agency to receive the case and ensure that the case is well coordinated among the different service provided for support. Also, we've done the, um, human, we are supporting the humanitarian response plan and HNOs to ensure that um, support or uh, we support the GBV and CP coordination group to ensure that the needs and of uh, child and adolescent survivors are reflected in the response plan and humanitarian needs um, overview uh, documents. Uh, this I think came in in handy and if there are any coordination group that would need support from CASI on this for 2020, we are happy to support and I think Niger now have mentioned that actually they are integrating the needs of child and adolescent survivor in their HRPs and HNOs for 2020. Uh, next slide is Ita. Another tool that we've actually developed this year is coordination tip sheet for COVID-19. Uh, this is a document that, um, that aims to inspire the CP and GBV coordination group to work closely together and even coordinate support to child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence. It encourages the actors, both the CP and GBV, to share priorities and develop inclusive working relationship throughout the humanitarian progress, uh, program cycle, right from the needs identification to the other uh, processes in the humanitarian program cycle. 
That document is available there, uh, here in this link, and we will be sharing this presentation after this. Um, you can always refer to that document. Uh, we actually completed the document last week and it is ready and shareable uh, to everyone. We are also planning to have CP and GBV field cooperation guidance. And actually this has close relationship with coordination tip sheet. And it is meant also to strengthen the field, coordination, uh, field collaboration and cooperation between CP and GBV AOR right from the global level to the field level um, uh, field levels. So this is something in the pipeline. Uh, and uh, lastly, as um, Michael said earlier, uh, when CASI started two years ago, the objective is um, actually to ensure that child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence have quality and access to services. And so um, during this phase two, we thought of going further to do a more in-depth understanding of barriers to child and adolescent uh, survivor access to services. And this actually will inform better uh, our programming better because uh, this, uh, the barriers will actually make us or create a more clearer picture of how to provide interventions to this group of children. It is actually a participatory barrier analysis where we will be engaging children and adolescents themselves through the process of data collection, getting their opinion, and also uh, looking into ways of also engaging their parents and their families to further give us more in-depth understanding of the barriers of child adolescents access to services. So we are planning to do this um, uh, exercise in two countries and we are currently thinking of Kenya and uh, Philippines and the discussions are still ongoing and uh, at the end of this we will develop and test a, met a methodology on uh, based on uh, action-based uh, barrier analysis. Um, thank you so much for, for your time um, and I would like to to introduce the next um, facilitator who is Jennifer Lee, who will take us through the CASI learning program and technical capacity development. Hi everyone. I just wanted to say it's actually Tizita Tekla Sadek who will be taking us through the CASI learning program. So um, Tizita, over to you uh, whenever you're ready. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, we can't hear you, Tutsita and Jennifer. Yes, I could just hear you then. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is uh, Tutsita Teklazadik. I am a child protection and gender-based violence child survivor specialist based here in California, but yeah, overseeing um, South Sudanese and Yemen uh, CASI learning program initiatives. So, I will take you through uh, phase two uh, initiative. I I believe um, on phase one there, there there have been a lot of uh, sharing of uh, learnings and also um, <clears throat> like in different platform we've been sharing the CASI phase one. So I I will be just um, going through the phase two implementation in particular uh, that we've been working with. Um, uh, South Sudanese and uh, Yemen for this uh, specific physical year. So, uh, 
for CASI phase two, um, I'll be focusing on the technical capacity development that has been led by IRC, um, whereas the coordination piece has been already covered by uh, Vivian. Thank you. So I'll be just focusing on the technical capacity development that we're, we've been providing under, um, under phase two. So what are the major pillars of the technical capacity development is uh, we have the eight months CASI learning program for CP and GBV uh, supervisors and uh, managers. So our technical support goes to them through different capacity building training, a series of coaching sessions, um, and also different uh, uh, troubleshooting and uh, on-job training. And the second pillar is partnership with uh, national NGOs and international NGOs. Like for this uh, phase two, we have selected two international NGOs and two national NGOs. Uh, um, fortunate enough, we have two national NGOs who's going to share with us their learning as well. So we, we've been providing uh, different technical capacity building for uh, international NGOs and national NGOs with this um, uh, intervention. Uh, and uh, the third one is, uh, the third pillar is around the Global Child Protection and GBV Committee of Practice. I think you've been familiar, most of you have been familiar with um, this Committee of Practice, which is conducted once in a month. And, uh, we have also upcoming uh, committee of practice which focused on disability inclusion and it will be on September 10th, just an announcement as well. So it will be a joint CPN, uh, GPV or um, joint platform. And we have also a global CASI workshop for global technical support and coordination colleagues uh, that will be also started on September 8th and um, that's also another announcement. <laughs> And the other uh, pillars of this programming is the coordination of CASI partners. So overall, the technical capacity development, in particular for CASI learning program, we provided um, for South Sudan and Yemen. So for this up to now, um, I mean, up to this month, we've been providing uh, different technical capacity building for uh, South Sudan, whereas in Yemen, we just put on hold uh, having a conversation with CPNG visa cluster because there have been different barriers and challenges so far. Um, so we have agreed uh, whether to provide the full package or not. So we've been waiting um, a cost extension to provide the full package uh, for Yemen. So we just put on hold, but we we'll resume uh, starting from this month uh, because we have got a green light on the cost extension. So what did we uh, implement um, for CASI learning program phase two so far? So the first one is uh, case management, uh, coaching and supervision training for supervisors and managers. Um, like the whole implementation started from starting from uh, February. So it's just after COVID hit. So uh, the implementation has been done remotely. Um, so this training provided remotely and uh, it took us four days um, and in each day we've been conducting four hours. So uh, like we've been trying to find out different technological uh, platforms and we have uploaded our training package uh, on Kaya platform. I hope many of you are aware it's a humanitarian platform. And with this training, we have a participant of around 36 participants, uh, which are comprised of international NGOs, um, UN agencies, which in particular UNFP and UNICEF, uh, and also to, uh, um, from the Ministry of Women, Children and Social Affairs, uh, from the Child Directorate and the Women Directorate Office, we have a representation and uh, 17 uh, participants from uh, national uh, NGOs uh, based in South Sudan. So by the end of the training, we have conducted pre and post assessment uh, just to track um, the knowledge and confidence of participants uh, in terms of supervising case workers and, um, uh, in particular. And the follow-up workshop has been conducted focusing on um, 
in terms of launching the CASI learning program for specifically selected uh, for CASI learning program, which is two international NGOs and two national NGOs, which means for national NGO IA and UNIDOR, I will be introducing later. And then international NGO, we have Plan International and World Division. So we've been working with them so far. And um, we had been sharing um, key partnership uh, principles, which is around um, equity, transparency, um, complementarity, and other principles so that we can have a binding principle with partners. Um, with that said, we have also signed a learning agreement among participants and it will be binding uh, within the CASI learning program. And in total for CASI learning program, uh, we have uh, 20 participants, we had, we had 20 participants, but unfortunately two staff have, there was a staff turnover uh, in some organizations and uh, one staff was on leave. So uh, 70 participants were actively involved, involved and regularly participated in the training. And the follow-up training that we've conducted is caring um, for child and adolescent survivor training. So that, that took us almost eight days and um, each day we've been taking four hours. So it's a very long training that because we've been deep diving and covering the whole piece as we like, as we're providing in in-person training. So we cover a lot and it, it took us almost eight days. So the training package adapted uh, and uploaded in Google Classroom. So what we've, we've been trying so far to adapt in different technological uh, platform because uh, we're trying um, our best so that it can really fit into the context. So this time around, we've tried the Google class, uh, Classroom because we felt that um, Kai has a, a little bit some challenge. So we tried to, to adapt that. Um, out of the 20 participants, again, we have uh, uh, 17 participants who regularly attended uh, throughout the training period. And as I said, it will it is um, targeted IRC, World Vision, Plan International from International NGO and from National NGO, uh, we have IA and Indoor and they will share later their learning. Um, um, the other piece of this project, this program is a uh, uh, sub award to national NGO to build their um, technical capacity and also operational capacities. And uh, we've been so far doing, um, uh, selecting the national NGOs, which is IA and UNIDOR. And we've been involving from the very beginning um, up to now, uh, child protection and DVD subcluster in the entire process. Uh, so we have selected AYA from the GBV program and um, CP um, uh, from CP we have selected in New York so that we, there could be equal representation and also uh, a learning exchange from the two uh, national NGOs. We have finalized the pre-award assessment and uh, it will be soon, uh, the fund will be released soon. Uh, the challenge so far, um, it's not about the, the learning piece in general because we have a lot of uh, learning documentation and I hope uh, we'll share with a big platform uh, about our learning in phase two, but so far in terms of operation, um, like the internet as you already, like I hope you encounter this challenge whenever you implement different programming. So we had a challenge in terms of accessing internet, especially in remote areas. Um, and also difficulty in using different technologies and platforms such as Kaya, Google Classroom, Google Classroom, Zoom, Kahoot, and uh, Juneboard. We had a lot of challenge and time constraint has been um, a challenge so far. Lesson learned, uh, we have uh, familiarized participants with technology and platform in advance. Uh, that could be really a learning in the future as well, like in terms of taking time to familiarize participants with different technologies and platform, um, engaging participants in regular communication and update that that's been very key in terms of uh, engaging and involving partners. Um, and that's been really helpful for our programming so far. And we have also learned there is a need for more CP and GBB joint platform. So um, I will be going ahead and uh, introduce uh, Aya and Inidor. So from Aya, we have Stella here. She is a GBB project coordinator. 
um, I am in active use agency um, for those of you who is not uh, familiar with. And I have also Kudzi here. Uh, she's a protection manager and um, Unidua is a universal intervention and development organization. So I would like to invite uh, Stella. Uh, yeah, the, the floor is open for you. Once again. Stella? No. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, once again, I'm really glad to, to meet you in this forum. Uh, as, uh, I was introducing myself in the beginning. I'm called Stella Minda Jonathan. I work for Active Youth Agency as a DVD project coordinator. Yeah, uh, we are really involved uh, in this PASI uh, learning program. So Active Youth Agency is a non-national uh, organization. Uh, and the vision for Active Youth Agency is uh, to empower, strengthen, and build the capacity of communities through advocacy and communication. Social economic activities, health, and civic education for peaceful transition in South Sudan. So this is the basically the reason that we have for Active Youth Agency. So our operational areas in South Sudan, I, I'm sure most of you know that we have 10 states. So Active Youth Agency is operating uh, in, in three states. Uh, in Central Equatoria, we are in uh, Duba and Lebanon. Then in Western Equatoria, we are in Mundri West, Mundri East, then Volo. Uh, in Western Baragazan, we are in Raja. So Active Youth Agency has 15 years experience operating in South Sudan. So in this 10, uh, 15 years, uh, regarding gender-based violence and child protection issues, we have experience of nine years. Next slide. Uh, I have experience with PASI learning program. As uh, Kizisa said, uh, we have just completed the capacity building. We had like three, two trainings and then a launching of uh, the, the, the workshop. So uh, as AYA, we participated in the remote capacity building trainings on case management, supervision and coaching. And also we had like a, a program launch workshop uh, for CASI learning. We also attended that. And also, we have recently attended a training on caring for child survivors and adolescent girls. So we're really very proud of that, that we are really strong to really have the gun now to shoot the, uh, the program with the capacity that we got from these three trainings. So in these tra three trainings, uh, we understood and learned about supervision skills, attitudes, knowledge, experience, staff care, and well-being. Uh, also, there's some tools that we are shared during the, the training. So like as a GBB actor or child protection, have a lot of tools that we are using. If you are in your implementing, we have uh, case management tools, we have tools for supervision. So during all these three trainings, we, are, we really acquired a lot of tools that were shared during the trainings. And also, as a result, uh, confident and empowered to provide uh, quality supervision to case workers. So during this uh, training for supervision and coaching, as supervisors, we really gain that confidence and we really empowered to provide these uh, quality services for supervision to case workers so that in future, or if you start implementing the project, so that we will be sure that our survivors are getting the quality services. So also, uh, during this training, we are equipped with necessary knowledge and skills and able to advocate internally to adopt some best practices, tools, approaches, and standards to care for child survivors and support case workers to deliver quality case management to children and adolescent survivors, survivors of sexual violence. So uh, as I say, we are in, during the training, we had a lot of uh, skills that were okay during the training. So uh, with this training, 
we are we are learning a lot of cross learning uh, issues between uh, TP and DBV. So the first one is um, how they need for regular capacity assessment that includes skill, attitude, and knowledge to case workers. So we just uh, we are further learning that they need to to do cost assessment to stuff that are going to implement this project and even other project apart from passing uh, project. Uh, also, we learned that this uh, emotional and psychological support is necessary to the child and adolescent as well as the caregiver of family members. Uh, and unlike like the one for gender-based violence, for the gender-based violence mostly will be concentrate in the, in the survivor. But for child protection, you support the survivor and also uh, you need also, there's need for us also to to support uh, the caregiver so that they'll be able to now to, to support the survivor, uh, to help the caseworker to support the survivor. So another point uh, is uh, integrating seven guiding principles of caring for child survivors and child friendly communication techniques across each steps of case management, working with child and adolescent survivors. So like uh, during the case management process for children and uh, adolescent girls, we really need to, uh, to have these techniques across the step from step one up to the end so that what we are providing with the quality one. So another, thing, another point is uh, we also learned that at certain developmental stage or age of the child, First aid caregivers or social workers can make informed consent on behalf of the child while the child make informed us. And we already know uh, as actors that we have some, there's legal age that the child is allowed to, con to give informed consent because of the, the mind, even the, the maturity in mind, all this. So it's allowed, like, uh, depending on the ages, they can work the caregivers and then social workers can can, can concern on behalf of them. So from learning uh, to practice, so as we have already acquired the, the, the capacity and all the knowledge and skills, so what we are going to do is like what we are to integrate in the implementation of CASI is that uh, based on learning plan to conduct uh, capacity assessment of case workers regularly and integrate it with the existing in-house capacity action plan. Already in the plan, we are going to do capacity assessment uh, Capacity the assessment, then we'll also integrate it in the in house assessment plan that we have. Another thing is uh, we also plan to improve the case management by including one on one supervision to case workers, group case management, observation, shadowing, and also a review of like uh, the files. On. So, this is what we are going to integrate in the, when we are doing the implementation of this project. Uh, also, another point is based on knowledge gain on care for child survivors training. We also planning to conduct, uh, like we are planning to do some tra training to case workers that are the ones that are under IA and also the ones that are working with other organizations so that if we are doing a response to children, we are supposed to do a multi-sectoral uh, response to children so that our services will be realized in the community. So this is a plan that we are going to support also other, other organizations. Another thing is, uh, uh, we are going to like the collaboration and coordination between child protection and act act and DB actors in this pattern. Previously, it was not like that, but uh, when we attended the launching with all the session in coordinations, I think when we implemented this project, we are going to strengthen the coordination between these two actors. So the last slide is a uh, point is previously I uh, I was not like um, I was referring children, child survivors to other sectors, but now we discussed the training, we got a capacity building, so we are, we, are, we, are, we are happy that we are going to provide like timely and quality case management and case services to children and adolescent survivors in addition, uh, and also plan to provide self-care for our case workers during the implementation of this CASE project. Thank you. No. Thank you so much, Stella. Uh, fantastic presentation. Uh, we are running uh, quite short on time, but we would still like to hear from Unidor. Uh, may I ask, please, Unidor uh, to uh, continue the presentation, but be mindful that we are now 
we only have five minutes left so if you may continue and do that in a very short presentation uh, we will use the last 30 seconds to wrap up so please go ahead Hello everyone, my name is Kuzanae Matiririra and I work for UNIDO as the protection manager in South Sudan. UNIDO is a national organization whose vision is to alleviate suffering, resolve conflict, prevent humanitarian crises and save lives. We are operational in Unity states in the following counties, Lerum, Mayendit, Koch and Panjinjar. in South Sudan and six years working on gender-based violence and child protection. Next slide. Um, as the previous uh, presenter said, we learned a lot and I'm going to focus on, you know, just cr on cross learning between CP and GBV partners during the training. On child pr protection, we realized that mandatory Reporting is an exception to the principle of confidentiality. Thus, as caseworkers and service providers, we have to make sure that we share limited information in order not to violate the principle of confidentiality. We also realized that due to funding constraints in some places and contexts, it is difficult to respond in timely and effective manner where there is no GBV partner and sometimes where there is no CP partner. Looking from the gender-based violence actors, we learned that children disclose sexual abuse differently and the disclosure is often a process rather than a single or specific event. We also learned that many cases go unreported because majority of child sexual abuse are interlinked with harmful traditional practices. And some of these harmful traditional practices are the issue of forced and early marriages and many people take it as a normal thing in, in, in South Sudan. So it's a challenge. Of learning into implementation of the sub award. As you heard, UNIDO is both a beneficiary of the learning, learning program as well as the sub award, which means we've, now that we've finished the learning program, we are now going to implement. And these are some of the theory we learned that we are going to put into practice. We are going to implement action plan for supervision during the CASI learning project period to make sure that the caseworkers and the supervisors are aware in service. We are going to adapt supervision coaching tools such as shadowing, observation to the unit or context. We are going to arrange one-on-one -on -one supervision sessions with caseworkers because we also learned that if you do it in a group session, some of the caseworkers might not listen and sometimes there's also disturbance. So we need to focus more and take more time with the caseworkers who have complicated cases. We are going to adapt communication tools and techniques and share with caseworkers. We are going to advocate further for senior managers to reduce the case load to 25 or less per each case worker. Because previously we realized that we're giving our case workers a lot of cases and at the end of the day, they became ineffective, uh, thereby compromising quality. We are going to provide uh, caring case workers and other multi sector that includes guiding principles, communication, psychosocial support and coordination. All this is aimed at mainstreaming gender-based violence into other sectors. Thank you very much. Shukran for listening. Thank you so much, Stella. Ah, good see. Fantastic work. And Stella. So uh, we are now on uh, time, but I will take a couple of minutes to just wrap up what we've been uh, hearing today. Thank you everybody who's able to stay. I know it's a very busy schedule. Uh, just to remember what we've heard, um, child and adolescence survivors of sexual violence fall between the cracks. 
we need to come together as in the protection and in interagency humanitarian response and be better at understanding and meeting the needs of child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence. Um, one key at the moment for us working in the humanitarian uh, world, there I know that there are other listeners to this uh, webinar today as well, but is to get this into the HRP, the humanitarian response planning process, which is ongoing at the moment. Understanding the needs better, understanding the barriers better, and uh, fundraise and allocate the resources together advocate for allocating the resources is absolutely crucial we heard presentations from uh, iraq that uh, kasi was helpful and still lives on there is knowledge transfer people staff and others who were not directly involved in kasi continue modeling the uh, communication and collective work together. Niger showed us the champions and super champions, uh, multi-sector services, SOPs and joint work plan. And they highlighted the needs for increased uh, ability to respond, skills and capacity development, resources and national ownership. The uh, CASI Learning Initiative is vital because it really provides the nuts and bolts for responding to child and adolescent survivors. So uh, working both with the coordination and building, working on the technical ability to respond in case management to child and adolescent survivors is a hand in hand uh, initiative which we offer to you so please do come and get in contact with us um, to support or share your good examples of how you're working because this at the end of the day like this webinar today sharing our experiences and varied ways of responding to child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence will inspire and will make us better at actually responding to each and every one of those survivors of sexual violence child and adolescent survivors of sexual violence do need us to work together on this so thank you very very much for listening and being active do keep in touch we look forward to see you in some way or another stay safe Thank you. Do, do feel free to put on the camera and do a bit of waving because you spent 90 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Vian, and thanks, Karina. Please, everyone, don't forget the evaluation and we'll send the evaluation by, uh, by email. Perhaps Thank you can send the link in the chat box already now, uh, Karina. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes, the evaluation. Don't forget the evaluation. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Great. Good to see everybody. Fantastic.